I'm out on the patio inviting you to join me for a cup of coffee or whatever it is you'd like or, and a psalm this morning. It's a um, beautiful uh, it's a beautiful morning outside of Clovis and we have a have a nice place to sit. I don't have a way of alerting people that I'm on, so I just want to let you know that I'm I'm here, you know, if you happen by that is great. If you um, if you miss some of this live, you're coming on later. You won't know that I said this, but uh, you can always replay. I leave this up all day, and most people don't watch it live. They they come on later. But it's it's great to be here, and it's great to be able to be outside this morning. It's a it's a pretty cool morning uh, here in uh, Fresno County, uh, out on Camora Drive and Camora Knowles. And I've been reading Psalm 90 this morning, and I just thought I would ah, read a verse and comment and read a verse and comment, not trying to do any extensive work on this, but uh, I love this psalm, as you may. Lord, you have been our refuge in all generations, from one generation to another. Uh, good morning to you, Sharon. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I might just stop and do this a little bit today. Um, just stop when I see a face or a name. Lord, you've been our refuge from one generation to another. We need a refuge sometimes. Um, this morning, uh, as he often does, my 14-year-old grandson startled our uh, youngest dog. Who is a jumpy dog? He's a he's a ADHD dog. He's he's Grandpa's dog, and so he had to just jump up on Grandpa's lap. He's not a little, he's not a pint-sized dog either. He's a he's all dog and 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 definitely um, a heavy dog. But he's not too um, he's not too old or too big to jump up on Grandpa's lap. God is our refuge, and. He has been so from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born from age to age, you are God. I love the way that time and eternity are mixed in the play on uh, tents. I, also, uh, good morning to you, uh, Tala, uh, waving at you because you got a wave there. Uh, there's no tense in Hebrew, but there is a sense of timing. And so, uh, this is a contrast of times. Before something is, you are uh, as a continuing action. Before is past, uh, and you are God. Before anything ever happened, outside of time, you are God in the present tense. God, our refuge, is God always, always in, in the present, uh, right now. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past, and like a watch in the night. Uh, you see, um, and, and I, whether like uh, Tala, you're in India, or Sharon, you're in Virginia, or wherever you're watching this from, uh, God is God, and God is present, and he is uh, present in the past and present in the present and present in the future. And it's all one thing. It's all one time. Timelessness. A thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past. It's just like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. So from our point of view, time is fleeting, fleeting fast. Uh, time is now past, time is now fleeting. The moments are passing, the hymn writer said. Uh, in the morning, it's green and flourishes. In the evening, it's dried up and withered. Kind of like my garden this year. I don't know what, whether it was spending three weeks uh, laid up in the hospital and not tending to it, not feeding it, or or what it was. But may my garden is a just in some pots. It is a sorry mess. I tried some artichokes. They all dried up. I tried a zucchini. You know, you, you have to be talented to kill zucchini, don't you? You really do. You have to have a certain kind of talent to kill a zucchini. And I have that talent. I killed 
the zucchini this year. Uh, it just flourishes. It, and I did it overnight. It, it's like I did it overnight. Uh, and I'm going to stop right now and say uh, we will be praying for your mother uh, who's suffering from fever and cough. And we pray that she uh, will be healed and uh, that she'll be protected in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, for we consume away in your displeasure. We're afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Well, the psalmist is sensing something of the, the, the power and the awe and the wonder of God. And approaching it as something uh, that uh, could, could terrify us because when we look at ourselves, he says, our iniquities you have set, set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. I was reading uh, the, the gospel this morning. Jesus uh, in uh, John has gone to the temple. He has denounced the oppressive and uh, repressive practices of the money changers and those who are seeking to profit off of the, the worship of people who've come sincerely to see God and to meet God. And it says that Jesus didn't, um, he held back something of his, himself and his purposes because he knew what was in the heart of men. Jesus uh, had a realistic approach to humanity. He did not have the capacity to be all that disappointed because he already knew. And yet he chose to love us and to invest everything in us. Uh, but the psalmist is praying from his own position, and he says, When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. See, I don't know that that is um, what God intends, but that's the way we respond to the power and the wonder and the, and the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not an opposite to the love of God, by the way. It's not a... It's not you flip the coin over and it's, it's unrecognizable one side or another. It is the direct result of the love of God. It is, it is uh, our going against that. Uh, good morning, uh, Flavia. God bless you. Um, our iniquities. When you are angry, our, our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they will pass away when we're gone. Sounds despairing, doesn't it? It sounds like we need a refuge. It sounds like, it almost sounds like the Proverbs or Ecclesiastes. Um, more Ecclesiastes than the Proverbs. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? I, I often think about the wrath of God and talk about the time that I was swimming in a fast-moving river uh, against the current to get to the other side. Uh, I had overestimated my strength and my ability to swim, and for some reason I had to swim a bit upstream. Brother Danny, good to see you. I'm stopping to greet people as I see them this morning in West Virginia. Flavia, I'm not sure where you are right now. You've moved but it's good to see you. Uh, but I, I, this was in West Virginia, by the way, uh, Danny, up near Fairmont, and I'm in, in that river trying to swim against the current. And um, I, was, I was in grave danger because the current was so strong. Now, was the current out to get me? Did the current hate me? Had the current singled me out? No, I was just trying to swim against it. Uh, then one day I was walking down the street in my neighborhood. I was a kid, uh, maybe 12 years old, and I was doing my uh, ADHD dr daydreaming and, and not paying any attention and not thinking about anything except what I was thinking about. And I walked straight in to a, to a, a sign that was uh, posted on the sidewalk. It was, you know, it was elevated off the ground. It was a, you know, a metal sign. And I bammed my head onto it. Now that is the ultimate of not paying attention. Did, was the sign out to get me? Did someone put that sign out there to hit my head? Uh, no, but it wasn't going to move for me either. Thus the wrath of God. Uh, he, he is stable. He is, he is uh, in place. 
And you can beat against it, you can try to swim against the current, uh, but it doesn't work. And so he, he says in a, in a prayer, so teach us um, to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. To wisdom. Now wisdom is not being smart. Wisdom is what we do with our smarts. It's what we do with the knowledge that we have. You can be very wise and not be as knowledgeable as the person who is not as wise as you if you make the right choices based upon what you know. And so he's praying this. He says, the consequences are high for our choices. Teach us to be aware of time, even though you are outside of time, even though time and eternity meet in you, and even though you are beyond time, teach us that we are living in time and that time is a stewardship that's been placed in our hands uh, to spend well, to spend wisely, and help us to make wise choices because the consequences are great. Because what we choose today affects today, but it also affects tomorrow. And to swim with the tide of where you're going, God, to go where you are going, to watch out for the, the mountains and the signs that, that you have placed for our own good and for your glory. Uh, Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. And he's coming around here, by the way. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so that we shall rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. This is not a despairing psalm. Uh, this isn't one of the psalms of lament. And yet there's always this element of lament. And there are some psalms that are uh, that are dedicated completely to lament, and they're a part of, of worship. But this is one that starts off with uh, the kind of realism that Jesus had when he held back some of, his, some of what he, he could have shared in Jerusalem on that day because he knew what was in the hearts of men, and yet he didn't despair over it. We understand that we're dealing with something. I've been to, I've been to some wonderful... Um, some wonderful places in the mountains where I was standing uh, at, at a precipice and looking over a deep canyon. And I knew that if I were foolish enough to, to jump, uh, the consequences would be grave. It takes your breath away when you stand in the presence of something so awesome and uh, magnificent. And you know, it's like, um, it's like uh, it was said in in uh, the Chronicles of Narnia about Aslan. Uh, is he safe? No, he's not safe. He's, he's wild. He's a lion. But he's good. But he's good. And so, uh, is God safe? Well, is a lawnmower safe? Is a canyon safe? Is a wild rushing river safe? No, but it's good. It's good. I mean, of course, the lawnmower is nothing compared to uh, something God made uh, directly. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning. It's morning here in Fresno County. So we shall rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. This is where this is going, you see. Uh, a rejoicing in the presence of God. Uh, yeah, that's why, you know, I brought my coffee out. And that, that makes me rejoice in the morning. I'm sitting out here on a beautiful patio that my wife built with the flowers she planted uh, in the pots. Make us glad by the measure of days you afflicted us and the years we've suffered adversity. So even, even the hard things that we've had to deal with, they're turned around in this moment of meeting God in this moment of coming face to face with the God who loves us, the God who has been our refuge from one generation to another. Show your servants your works and your splendor to the children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. And then he talks about something that, that hopefully we'll all be involved in a little bit today. Living purposefully today, the day that we've been given, he says, prosper the works of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Oh, I'm looking forward to a good day. I'm, I'm starting off kind of slow. I've done some work. I've been awake for a long time. 
but uh, you know, I haven't gotten down to the drudgery work that I have to do today. And you know, I don't mind it if it is meaningful, if it makes a difference. And so my prayer today in the midst of time, uh, in, in, where time meets eternity, where the secular and the spiritual all flow together, where there is no distinction between the sacred and the profane except in how we dedicate them and how we consecrate them and commit them so that even the ordinary becomes sacred in the presence of God. My prayer is prosper the work of my hands and your hands today. Prosper our handiwork. Not that it just pays us in, in dollars and cents and, and luxuries, but that it makes a difference in the world and points others to the refuge that they and we can find in God. Lord, you've been our refuge from one generation to another. And may God bless you in that reality. And may he uh, thank you for joining me live and all of those who are joining us uh, later and any I may have missed on the screen. I'm just reading off the screen today. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining us uh, in church today. And, and join us tomorrow uh, at 9 o'clock. At least this, I know what time we're going to meet at 9 o'clock tomorrow, um, Pacific time. God bless.